On Monday, GOP nominee Donald Trump laid out his economic plan in Detroit. The speech was very low on specifics, but he did mention lowering taxes and eliminating the so-called death tax. Let's talk about that and more with Congressman John Yarmuth, Democrat of Kentucky. He endorsed Hillary Clinton in November of last year, was a superdelegate through the Democratic National Convention. He's represented Kentucky's 3rd District since 2007. Donald Trump laid out his economic plan. He referred a lot to go to his website. What did you make of it, uh, John? <laughs> well, I make of it the same thing that Newt Gingrich and uh, many other economists, uh, not that Newt Gingrich is an economist, but and also many economists have, have concluded, and that is that the numbers don't add up. Uh, it's, uh, it's a terribly top-heavy proposal. It's kind of the same old trickle-down economics, give money to uh, more money to corporations and to the very wealthiest Americans, and supposedly it's going to trickle down and help uh, uh, middle class and working class Americans, but it never does. And in the, in the meantime, it will really blow the deficit up. Uh, some estimates of close to $10, billion, $10 trillion over uh, a 10 year window. So uh, it's, it would be, this is, this is the kind of policy that has already proven to be a failure. And I, I hope that the American people see it for what it is. Hillary Clinton now has a pretty solid lead in national polls. Can, she, can you get overconfident? <laughs> well, I think certainly things look very good for Democrats right now and, sir, and for, for Secretary Clinton. Uh, I, I think that the main thing that I've learned over the last few years, first of all, polls are highly uh, uh, volatile and unreliable. I think the decline right now, those people who refuse to be polled is somewhere around 93, 94 percent. So it's very difficult to get an accurate sample. And the ultimate measure is who turns out. Uh, we had a race in, for governor in Kentucky last year where every poll predicted that uh, the Democrat was going to win by 8 to 10 percentage points, and he lost by 10 percentage points. It was basically because the people we thought were going to show up to vote didn't come out. So ultimately, you got to get to the polls before and, and vote, and, and that's what I think uh, Hillary has a, a real uh, big advantage in doing. Uh, she has the kind of uh, get out the vote operation that you need in virtually every state, and, and uh, Donald Trump's infrastructure is not there yet. So uh, everything looks good right now, but as we know, things can turn around pretty rapidly. Yeah, a year ago, before you endorsed her, you said you were worried about the email controversy. It seems to still exist with, despite her lead. Will it go away? Well, I don't know whether it's going to go away. I think it's baked in the cake right now. The, uh, the people who uh, are satisfied with her answer, or at least don't, uh, uh, aren't going to make their uh, vote, to cast their vote based on that issue, uh, I, I don't think they're going to be affected. And the ones who already don't trust Hillary don't trust her. Uh, I think we all would like to see her handle it a little bit differently. I, I think uh, basically. She's trying to, to parse something that I think she's actually being uh, pretty accurate on, but it doesn't sound like it makes sense. Uh, what the attorney general said was that, he, that, in fact, she did tell the truth to the investigators, the FBI investigators who interviewed her. What he also said was that it was not true that she never forwarded classified information. Those are really two different questions and answers. Uh, I don't think the American people draw the distinction. And that's where I think she's, where she said she's short-circuited. Uh, I think she's got to clarify that a little bit better. Uh, it was very, but, but she's right. The attorney general said that she did not lie to FBI investigators. And, and she needs to be clear about that. But also, he did say that classified information, albeit information that wasn't marked classified, uh, was transmitted. So it, it's getting a little bit <laughs> a matter of semantics, but uh, it, I think the American people probably have already figured out one way or another whether they, whether they believe her or don't, and whether they think that's a, a, a disqualifier or not. It's a question of what is is. <laughs> <laughs> what is is, exactly. Barack Obama says that Donald Trump is unfit to be president. Do you agree with that? I totally agree with, with uh, President Obama on that, and many others, by the way, including a lot of very highly respected uh, former military uh, leaders. He, both temperamentally and knowledge-wise, intellectually, uh, he fails the test. And 
I, you know, I saw one statement where he said, it's better to know a little bit about NATO than a lot about NATO. I mean, those kind of comments uh, to me are disqualifying and prove that he's unfit. He really doesn't feel, he trusts his, his basic instincts, whatever they are, uh, over actual information and knowledge. And that's pretty scary when you're talking about being commander in chief. He says the election is rigged. What do you make of that? Oh, you know, the same thing I make out of a lot of what he says. He's just blabbering. I, I think there's no way elections are rigged. I mean, uh, the, we have one of the most uh, secure and reliable voting systems uh, anywhere in the world. Uh, with the exception of 2000 in Florida, there's really never been much controversy about elections. There's been uh, th there have been studies that show there's virtually no there are no cases of of voter fraud anywhere in the country. They're, they're so limited as to be almost non-existent. So I don't know what he's talking about. I, I think what he's probably referencing is uh, that the, the media, which basically uh, got him to where he became the nominee, has now started apply, acting like journalists and is now actually starting to question him, starting to, uh, to fact check his statements, uh, going back looking at his business record, his other statements, and he's not getting the kind of kit glove treatment that he once got, so now he thinks that the media uh, are in cahoots with, uh, with others trying to deny him the election. That's probably what he's talking about, but in terms of the, the basic electoral system, I think he's insulting the American people and, uh, in, in, in implying at all that there's something structurally wrong with the way we conduct our elections. What does Kentucky look like for the presidential race? Well, you know, I think if, if you were betting, you'd have to bet that Donald Trump will carry the state. He will, he will do very poorly in Louisville. He'll do very poorly in Lexington and some other isolated spots. But I think, you know, for, for many Kentuckians for whom politics has become kind of a University of Kentucky versus University of Louisville thing, it's not really about policy or governing philosophy. It's about which team you are. I think a, a lot of those people who now believe they're on the Republican team are going to vote for him. So I, I think he'll probably carry Kentucky. I don't think it will be by nearly the margin that um, uh, uh, Governor Romney carried it against Barack Obama, which was 60-40. I look for something more in the 54 percent for 55 percent range, which would still allow, I think, our Senate candidate to be competitive against Rand Paul. And um, who knows? Again, it's all about who turns out. And there, there are a lot of people in, in Kentucky who might not uh, be excited about by Donald Trump and might stay home. I know the Clinton campaign, uh, they have, they've hired a state director. He's on the ground here. Uh, the campaign's opening offices in Louisville and Lexington, so they're investing here, and uh, so they must think that uh, they, uh, they have a chance of some sort. If Rand Paul were on the libertarian ticket, what would that do to this race? That's a great question, Larry. Uh, I think he has a built-in vote, uh, largely inherited from his father, but uh, some of which he's generated that I would guess probably would take that ticket up close to the 15 percent uh, level where they would qualify for inclusion in the debates, and that would be a very significant step. Uh, he, he certainly has a lot more name recognition than either Johnson or Weld, and uh, I, I think it would, boost the, the, would have boosted the Libertarian ticket substantially. All right, what's your overall prediction for November? I think that... Um, that Hillary Clinton's going to win with well over uh, 350 electoral votes. I think she's going to win some states that, uh, that Democrats have not been successful in over the last uh, few election cycles, notably uh, Arizona and Georgia. And I think Democrats will take back the Senate, probably with uh, two or three votes to sp uh, seats to spare. And uh, we'll get close in the House. I don't think Getting the, picking up 30 seats to take over the majority in the House is not impossible. It's a, it's a pretty difficult task, but I bet we get to the point where we pick up at least 20 seats and then have a situation in which it's uh, maybe 225 Republicans to 200 Democrats, and that makes a governing majority a lot easier to achieve. So in, in any event, I think we're likely to see a Congress uh, working with uh, President Clinton that will be much more productive 
because uh, the, the extreme elements of the Republican Party won't be able to, to control the agenda as they have for the last uh, four years. John, as always, thank you. Thank you, Larry. Good to be with you. Congressman John Yarmouth, Democrat of Kentucky.